What's all about the cobalt bomb? Hey, Tony, yeah. are you sitting over here? You want to grab a chair that's out oh, there. Oh, uh, you want me to sit over there? I was just going to hang out here by the camera. Oh, oh that's fine. Then, then, then that's that'll work, too. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to stand um, around and take pictures now and then. If, if you Welcome Latimer Putin to our guests. Our guests. If, our if you both dinner. moved about two inches that way, then I would get both of you in the shot and the back of your head in the shot. Latimer Putin is our far. special guest for our turkey dinner. <laughs> yes, <laughs> perfect. Important. There's a CIA assassin ready to bump off Latimer Putin. And then, I don't know if you care, if you if you we can see you or not. No, I don't care at all. Okay, but uh, if you were to turn the chair that way instead of this way, then I'd get a nice You're side right. shot, and I'd get you and both of them all in the same. Deal. But if it's not important to you, then I get the back of your head. So. Yeah, it's. I'd rather look at them when I'm talking to them. Okay. Oh no! I, I meant you can still look at him, just like just lean slightly well, okay. uh, that way. But you you do what you want. We're good. Before I guess the back of your head, you don't have to shave it. Yeah, and then look at them, but it'll be kind of side eye. Right. <laughs> and then is is it possible that we could lower the bar because it's like right in the middle of his face? These actually don't. Yeah, they're immovable. Can we bend right. it a little oh, bit? So oh, right yeah, bend it. That's, that's right there. Is perfect. Or, that is perfect. We're supposed to raise the bar and jump over it. <laughs> and you can put as many bars in front of me as you like. <laughs> I, don't I don't think either one of us is terribly that, fond of no. being on camera. Well, we, this is we got Norman's jail. front and center, and then both of you are peripheral left and right, so we're good. Perfect. Perfect. Ledge, can we can we interview you as the ledge? Uh, well, just call me Ledgy Baby. Ledgy Baby. Oh, that's too loud. <laughs> okay. Too loud. loud. How's this? How's this? How's that, how's just turn loud? your mic down. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 right. Is that yeah, good? That's okay. That's I good. can't hear anything. I was gonna, I was gonna pop pop my left eardrum. Turn it up, Tim, because you turned it all the way off. I can't hear anything uh, now. I know. Turn it up a little bit. Keep going. Yeah, I am. Okay. Oh, we okay. need to talk okay. though, so we yeah. can hear something. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's good. You sound the same way you do on radio. Oh well, that's that's reassuring. It's just your your mic was louder. Okay. Now who? Anybody around here named Mike? Oh, there he is. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Are you? Did you start? Yeah, I'm just I'm running now. So today's program is brought to you by Red Bull, the, <laughs> the drink that Auntie Mama used to make. Hmm. But that's five. That, is that Red Bull? No, that's five hour energy drink. Oh, you shouldn't have let that known to the audience. Now they're going to run down and get one. Well, we're well, working we'll on that in, endorsement we'll deal for you. We'll cut it in post production. Much. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Don Rickles Jr. Well, you and you want to start? We well, already we started. Well, okay. let's. well, I've got, I've got, I've got a question I wanted to start with right off the oh, bat. Oh yeah, put that box of bottle away. <laughs> It's the only way we're going to get through this interview. Yeah, it's, it's shaken or stirred. That's the one question I wanted to start with. Oh, shake and bake? That's a California earthquake. <laughs> uh, in the article in the Free Press, you said that everybody always asks you the same question all the time. So what questions do you get asked all the time that we can put it out there that people should stop asking you? Don't stop asking... Uh, how did it get? How did you get your name, legendary Stardust Cowboy? How did you write Paralyzed? Paralyzed. Where you come from? You know the, the usual uh, uh, snooty questions. Snooty. How are they? How are they snooty? Because they're foxy. Foxy is in like uh, clever. Oh, I guess so. Or I guess. Okay. Oh, remember the uh, the fox got his tail caught in the crack. It tore the fox's tail right off his back. <laughs> we should, we should so add don't to don't ask those questions for the, the benefit of foxes. The sound that you're hearing in the background is the ledge signing paper plates in anticipation of tonight's show. So that's that's the, the arts and crafts sound that you're hearing in the background. Yeah. How, um, well, what's, what's a seal? That's arts and crafts used to be seals and cross. <laughs> <sighs> what is a question that you've always wanted to be asked and nobody has ever asked you? Uh... Are you insane? Are you Lash, insane? Are you insane? Shucks, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do people ask you a lot about Lubbock? Because we've interviewed you a lot over the years. Well, I haven't been there since 73, so I don't know if it's still there or not. <laughs> 
You said that it's bigger than it. It's it's, it's bigger six than, times bigger than it was when you were there. It's bigger than Ofer Winfrey's toenail. Uh -huh. But um, I'm trying to because we were we didn't write a lot of inter interview questions because we chatted with you so much over the years. Oh, I just felt to throw on the pickups. Top ten favorites, like Leonard. Well, Mandela. but but we were trying to think of you know something that we haven't. We've only kind of talked to you on the phone about in the past is growing up in Lubbock and what that was like and your family and like those first first times that you played a guitar, the first time you got up in front of somebody and, and played music. Do you want to talk about some of that? Uh, not not in front of my family. No, I didn't do that. You uh, didn't play in front of your family? No, I I hid that from. I kept that a secret, you know. Did you really? Yeah. So they didn't know that you were playing guitar? Well, they knew I was taking guitar lessons, get fiddle, get fiddle lessons. I don't laugh if I'm trying to write. <laughs> <laughs> you laughed anyway! <laughs> Accent! <laughs> But do you, do you want to talk a little bit about growing up in Lubbock? Because I, I think over the last couple of years you've talked more and more about growing up in Lubbock and your family and like how your family, how your family, a lot of them were where they came from and things like that. And that's something we haven't really ever right. sat down and done an interview with and asked you questions about. Well, your dad was a mechanic, right? Yeah, but I forgot I forgot how to spell cowboy. I just put down cow. Oh, that's cowboy. You're well, good. Oh, you're. You messed up my joke. <laughs> what was I supposed to say? Uh, okay. Next. <laughs> uh, next train. Next train to Buffalo, so we Buffalo. Well, let's ask you how it feels to be coming back to Mankato for a second time. What was it, deja vu? <laughs> Does it feel like deja vu? Yeah, I forgot where I'm at. Man Mankato. Uh, no, down the street. Is that Mato, can man Kato across the street? Well, that's a man who thinks his name is Kato. He's in the, he's in the uh, alley-oop, alley-oop belly. I don't want to mess up your joke. Alley-oop. <laughs> so you're 70, Ledge. How, yeah. does it, how does it feel to be 70? Well, feel like just like it was when I was 60. I'm still able to paint barns. Paint barns? Yeah. I paint them purple. For the Vikings? No. For Yahoo. Yahoo! Yeah, deep purple. The official color for Yahoo. I did not know that. I didn't uh, know they had colors. Oh, you don't have a Yahoo account? I have a Yahoo account, but I don't didn't know it was color coded. You don't have a Yahoo uh, account. I got email. Email? Oh, okay. I'm going to put my email address down here. Do you want to say it for the listeners? Uh, uh, there's one thing here I, I, I keep forgetting what it's called. The, the at? The, the, the what? That? Is no, that what, what you forget? No, 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 no. Let's, do you remember the first time we spoke to you on the phone? <laughs> it was an awful lot like this. <laughs> what? what is that? What? What's that line called? Oh yeah, what is that lower line called? Uh, underscore? Underscore. So well, I never can remember that. Norman, uh -huh. then underscore, which is that line that's on the bottom. Odam, O-D-A-M, at yahoo.com. Boy, so, I want that plate. Somebody's getting that on their plate tonight. Well, do, you, do you look at your Facebook, or do you look at your email? No. <laughs> no, once every, no, once every six months I go dump all the ads. Oh, spam. Oh, yeah. I'd rather have ham and spam because I can eat it. You know, we do the card shower for you for your birthday and the holidays, and we always say that you're old school, you don't have a computer, so you don't have Facebook, so somebody can't just write you a Facebook message. I, I'm the kind of guy, guy that depends upon depends upon my fan letters in the mail, my, my P.O. box, because I, I like to, I'm a stamp collector, mm -hmm. and I like exotic stamps on the envelope so I can take them off put them in my stamp album. You want to give everybody your address? The legendary Stardust Cowboy Post Office Box 730742 
San Jose, California, 95173. Do you want to hear Tim and I do it? We, we do this. What? Well, well, you, put, you put the legendary Star Wars. <laughs> we do, we do, we do, do okay. that, actually. We can do that. Do, we, right. do we want to do it as a ledge? Yeah. Yep, 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 okay. yep, yep. Right. Norman? Do you, do you want to start? Yeah. No? Are you going to? No. Okay. In five. Here we go. Four. Three. <laughs> Norman? Carl? Odom. Legendary. Stardust. Cowboy. P. O. Box. Seven. Three. Zero. Seven. Four. Two. San. Jose. California. Nine five one seven three. That's right. <laughs> did you get a lot of birthday cards for your birthday ledge? I uh, sure did. Yeah? I really get Christmas cards because I saved those. You say Okay. I give, well, I, give, I, I, I give all my birthday cards to my... Uh, Webmaster, uh -huh. webmaster, so you can put into the ledge archives. Sure. But you keep the Christmas cards. Yeah, I keep the Christmas cards for That's myself. That's good to know. How no, many songs do you no, think you've no, written, Ledge? Well, uh, just 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 uh, just a minute. Uh, let me count them. Uh, I got a Christmas card last year from Shelley's mother. She signed it on the inside, but the address on the front of the envelope. Was a different person's handwriting. Mm. Oh, I asked her about that. What was it? She told me that she. She told me I think that she wrote the card, and then I think. My niece wrote the address down when she heard it on the radio because she listens to the radio, um, with my nieces. So one of my nieces wrote on the envelope. Well, the envelope writing on the front was, was very legible, very, <laughs> very. Uh, Readable. When my in my mom's was it so readable? Well, 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 the people in the post office didn't know about that. So. It was legible for the postal workers. We always tell people to put stars all around your address. Mm -hmm. Do you get stars around the address then, you, or at least around the legendary Stardust Cowboy part? Yeah, that's a minimum. That's a minimum. Now, do you remember too? You like, what was it like three or four years ago? You started insisting that we throw Carl in there. Because we used to just have Norman Odom, and then you insisted that we put Carl in, and then I remember like a year after that, I I, I said your address, or I, I was talking to you on the phone, said your address, and you said Carl, what's that about? <laughs> well, that's my dad's middle. That's my dad's name. What's your dad's name? But your full name. What was his yeah. middle name? No, no, his name. His name was Carl Bunyan Odom. Bunyan. Huh. Now, now, is that two places stuck together? Uh, I got some. T Got some Do you wanna, syrup there. You know, we could probably have you sign those those plates after we're done here. Oh no! Wait a minute. Let me finish the plates. Uh, my grandparents were going to name my dad Paul Bunyan. Oh. But ah. they, they decided on Carl Bunyan. So Hold him. You said Bunyan, and I thought it was B U N I O U O N. No, 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 the, no. the foot thing. B U N Y A N. Okay. Do you know his he was named after my granddad. I was going to ask. Called, called Bunyan Carl Odom. I, Bunyan Clark Odom. Okay. And they, and everybody called him by his uh, nickname Bun. So his first oh. name was Bunyan? Yeah, Bunyan. Wow. That's great. Bunyan Clark Odom. And, and, it's, and they call him Bun for short. And, uh, and and your mom's name? What was your mom's name? Was was Utana. Utah. That's a beautiful Utah. name. How do you spell I think that? U T A A. Remember the U Utah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. O double N A. And uh, her last name was, well, it was French. We're French on my mother's side of the family, but because my granddad was born in the Houston area in 1873, and my yes, uh, the English people pronounce it Beecham, but in French it's Beauchamp. Oh, oh sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, you ever heard that? There's not too many people in the states. Uh, a friend of mine in Las Vegas from from uh, Quebec, Canada, said there's a lot of Beechams in Canada. Mm -hmm. And a waitress at the Dunes Hotel in Las at, at the uh, Desert Inn Hotel in Las Vegas told me she's from Paris. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people with that name in Paris and in France, you know, but not too many people in the United States with that name. So if I uh, went to Paris looking at my family tree, I hope all the Beecham's out there, or Beauchamp's out there, wouldn't uh, 
try to say they're related to me. Oh my goodness! Oh you start talking family tree, and my mom will get an ancestry yeah. and figure it all so out. So your for mom, you. your mom's name is Utana Beauchamp. <laughs> yes. That's a wow. gorgeous but, name. But I'll bet there's never been another one. Never will be. Uh, but my relatives gave her a nickname. They called her Tani. Oh. T o n n i e Tani. Mm hmm. Where they came up with that was beyond me. <laughs> but back, but back at the home, we didn't call mommy Tani. Uh huh. What'd you call her? Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> mommy. <laughs> mommy. 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 I want my teddy bear. And you have a sister, correct? Oh yeah. What's her name? Wrestling. 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 You know, you know the Italian word. No. no. Italian name. How's it spelled? Uh, how do you spell legendary? Oh, D I R, D A I R Y. Yep. D A I R Y. Legendary. Oh, you put legendary. D A I R Y. <laughs> that one can go to the milk producers. <laughs> oh, you have producers milk in town. We do. We got farmers all over. Oh, boy. Dairy farmers. Well, well, well kiss my rain bucket. Were, did, were you and your sister, did you have a sibling rivalry? Did you get along pretty well or did you fight nah. all the time? Did oh. she know that you were playing nah. music? Oh, well, she did. She did. Found out later. And she. Reached under the car. I had a 63 Chevy Impala. Impala, and she reached under the driver's seat, pulled out my chrome plated bugle, and th tossed it out in the middle of the street. Oh. I did that several times. I had to get a Boy Scout bugle. Uh -huh. And JC Penny's there about once a month. Because <laughs> she didn't like you playing it? Or? Yeah, because that was because she thought people were making fun of me. Oh. I came home one day, she went in my bedroom, and found my black. Corduroy breeches yeah, was with all the designs on them, like a Michael Jackson outfit. Uh huh. She threw those in the trash. Oh, for Pete's sake! Is that what you wore when you would like perform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I strut down the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. What is your sister's middle name? Sue. That's a name I've heard of. So, uh, Wesley W. W R E S T L A Y. My brother in law. I've never heard of that name. You what? I've never heard of that he's name. A, he's Italian. Okay. Well, th that's her last name? No? Yeah. Wrestling? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now don't go looking it up. <laughs> that's thought, just the phone ringing. Well, the they're, they're, in the, they're in the yellow pages. I thought that was an earthquake. Or, or thunder or lightning? Let her be thunder. Thunderation. How old were you when you left Lubbock? I was 21. Yeah. I'm 21 and less than a week I met, went to, uh, met up with T-Bone Burnett. Wow. did you say that you were trying to get in the Army before that? Or no, not the Army, the Air Force? Well, I passed all the tests in the Air Force, four of them, to get in there. But I couldn't get in because there's too many bodies trying to get in. Mm. Too many people trying to squeeze in. Because this was... The, to avoid the Vietnam War. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried to get in the Navy. No room there. Hmm. Uh, Marines said we'll take you. We've got plenty of empty spaces left. Well, they're all, they all ship them over there about once a week. They're all gone. A whole uh, brigade is gone. So they have to have refills. Refills for their soldiers over there. My cousin was a major in the Army in Vietnam for 13 months. Due to uh, Agent Orange, he got leukemia and died at age 45. Mm. He didn't live long enough to sue the government. Ah, that's it. Is that the stuff? Now that's the, that's the end of my peach mango. You want me to autograph that for you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, you sound, you sound like that guy, that guy on Desperate Housewives, that Australian. The show that we have yet with, to watch. With Vanessa, what, you haven't seen that? Never no. seen, no. I'm waiting until I can watch it with you, so I can hear the commentary track. Oh, my. <laughs> so you left Lubbock when you were 21? Yeah. You I try, I, oh, I volunteered for the Army. I was turned down because of um, my eye allergy. Uh, <coughs> The draft board drafted me, Selective Service drafted me. They turned me down because I had a trick knee joint. Hmm. I fell down 
On the basketball floor when I was about 13 years old, injured my right knee and injured my right knee and uh, I could walk 10 miles, my left knee would be just fine after 10 miles, but my right knee would, uh, was, uh, the brain shuts down that part of the body so it won't injure it further, further and uh, my right knee would almost collapse. I was, I'll be walking through the department stores. But, uh, so I had to put an elastic uh, bandage over my knee. It finally, after several years, my right knee got what healed itself. Now, uh, I wore, I wore elastic bandages over my both knees because in the early days, in the early days, jumping up and down on the stage with my weight and my, with my weight, and uh, it, it would uh, my, my knees would swell up and I could hardly stand on and walk on them. You know, fill with water, you know. So if I do that, I can jump around on the stage and not injure my knees. Here's a question for you: How? I mean, at what point did you start stripping down to your underwear in your stage <laughs> show? Did, have you always well, I, done that, or no, when did that start? I started after I saw Rod Stewart rip his shirt off, sing Sexy Baby. Or, oh, do you think I'm sexy? No. If you want my body. No, no, uh, you want my saddle. <laughs> my smelly saddle. Here's a bar saddle self to go with it. <laughs> So how many years ago would that been? In the 80s? Oh yeah, stripper. Uh, the first time I took my shirt off on stage was uh, Greenville Avenue on a, uh, at a venue in Dallas, East Dallas. And uh, that's when I came up with the idea for paper plates too. Autograph them and, and sling them to the audience. <laughs> Not throw them, sling them. I, I grab five at once and just, I go, Phew. you know, they scatter out around the audience. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's something the Frank Sinatra didn't do. He had, some, he had somebody do it for him. Can you imagine Frank Sinatra slinging autograph paper plates? The audience says, I got you under my skin. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. I wonder how long his career would have lasted if he started doing that. Uh, five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I got you under my skin. Oh, yeah, baby. I got you under my hide. I still have two paper plates from the last time you were in Mankato. Uh, has the has the ink faded? No, nope, they're still good to go. You must have spray some of that preservative on them. Well, I, I took a, I took a picture of one of them with uh, Christmas lights around it, and we put it on our uh, blog for the holidays to remind folks to send you those Christmas cards. Oh, you didn't dip in the varnish? Nope, nope. I think the, I think it'll just be good to go. Oh, sh sharpie. Oh, oh, shellac would do better. Shellac. Yeah. Shellac. You know, uh, there was an ex-president who said, well, we got shellacked in the polls. Uh, you remember that one? I remember the phrase, but I don't know what president it was that said it. That's old bummer. Oh. <laughs> we had old bummer during the summer. Uh, California covered. Oh, that's Obamacare. I guess Obama's got you covered with an electric blanket, of course. Oh, I wrote my name backwards. Stardust Cowboy Legendary. I'm you know, back when we first started listening to you, I used to get the order of it mixed up too, because I can be like that on occasion. But yeah, I feel like I want the, I, the Stardust Cowboy Legendary. Now, uh, now that's that. That's going to be worth some bucks too. Yeah, and the dairy one that's in there too. Worth two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Rare error plate. How many times do you think in your lifetime you've signed your autograph? Oh, not as much as a Elvis. Well, that's that's the king. Elvis never signed paper plates, though. Either. Oh, he couldn't afford them. They, uh, see that article in Time Magazine about Elvis recently? Uh, no. Uh, it's been estimated by the experts he, at... Uh, when he was alive, and then after he passed away, his total record sales top over one billion. Oh, records. I did see that fact. And uh, the Beatles have a long way to go. Yeah, compared to Elvis, that's for sure. How, how, how far back are the Beatles for record sales? 62? 1962? Well, I wrote Stardust twice. I got double... 
double vision. You should write Cowboy three times. Well, I'm shoot. I'm, I'm, Legendary once, Stardust twice, Cowboy oh, three shoot, times. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to get off my saddle anymore. <laughs> Let's. Do you know how how Mercury ended up with with paralyzed? How did how did they end up picking it up from Psycho Suave? Major Bill Smith was out of town whenever we recorded it, and he came in and heard it. Uh, people were requesting. A girl from Hazel, Texas, drove down, requesting a copy of it. He said he he said he saw the potential in it, so he grabbed the raw tape from T. Bo Burnett, stole it from him, and he and he solicited different major record companies, had them all bidding one week. One week, you know, and then uh, Johnny Sipple, the A&R man for Mercury Records, says, "Well, we'll buy it. We'll, we'll buy it." Sent about a ten-page contract to Major Bill Smith, and Major Bill Smith had then write in there that that he owned me, and mm -hmm. he owned me and all my material, and that that uh, had a five-year contract with him, a five-thousand-dollar advance. I would get 48 cents for every album sold and a nickel for every single sold. And well, there were some ladies in the office who read that contract. Says they saw the, the figures down there for record sales. They turned around and looked at me and said, Elvis! Because <laughs> they thought you were making Elvis money? Yeah, uh -huh. I might make it myself. My big contract like Elvis had. Oh, sure. <laughs> but I almost got married to a stewardess. But, oh, stewardess, stewardess asked me, uh, the way I was dressed, I, I was dressed in gray flared pants, white loafers, and a and a and a paisley shirt. It had big co big collar on it. I stand up and coming way down here to point. They asked me, one one brand of airline service asked me, "Do you have a date tonight?" And I said, "Sure, I got a date with my car." She said, "I'll forget it." Get it walked off. If I had to say that, I'd probably got a date with her, uh. and I've been flying away with Braniff now. <laughs> <laughs> the late Braniff Airlines, founded by Tom Braniff in Dallas. You never flown oh. Braniff, had you? No. As a matter of fact, talking about uh, Braniff Airlines, the first time I flew an airplane, uh, I was uh, shortly after I was 21 on Mercury, you know, I was uh, I flew on Braniff Airways in Dallas Left Field. T. Bo Burnett was on my left side, and his uh, business partner, David Anderson, was on my right side, my drummer. First time we were flying to Houston to do a, a Larry Kane show down there. And, and my first airplane flight was with T. Bo Burnett. Wow. That was two decades before he became well known. Hmm. We didn't, the first time I heard, heard my records on the radio, we were coming back from the Dallas Fort Worth Turnpike, listen to KLIF radio station, and they played Paralyzed on the radio station, the top 40 station there. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, because we all lived in Fort Worth at that time. Wow. Uh, Do you remember oh, what it felt like to hear your song on the radio? Right now, the uh, now in <laughs> Holland, Hilversum, Hilversum, Holland is the town, the uh, entertainment center of Holland. Uh, main TV station there, and radio station, and the shortwave radio station is, is in Hilversum, Holland, 15 uh, kilometers north of Amsterdam. We were coming back down the freeway, and they were listening to the station, Radio Holland. They were playing a Michael Jackson song, and every once in a while they'd break in, they'd, they'd, and they'd play a rebel yell and paralyzed over <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> They, when I went to perform at midnight uh, at a gymnasium, there's some town in Holland, it's all filled with you know young people, teenagers, what have you. Whenever ever, I've seen paralyzed, and every time I did a, a rebel yell, the whole audience did a rebel yell in unison right after me. Wow. And, and uh, when I've noticed that when I go overseas, every journalist of every newspaper, every TV station, every radio station, every publication, magazine, they all want to do an interview with me or and or a photo shoot with me. When I since I've come back to the United and when I come back to the United States, I'm treated like a piece of crap. And what? there's a lot the, wait a minute, Butch. <laughs> Ooh, that's, a, that's a new one. You know, Butch Hancock. Call him oh, yes. Tim Lindy. <laughs> 
Uh, Tim Lynn is very winning. Now, uh, <laughs> don't care. <laughs> Okay. So you're treating... No, like no, 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 no. Uh, there's a, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of entertainers that can't make it in the United States because the major record companies have a grip on who they want to promote big time in the United States mm -hmm. and which ones they don't want to promote. And they once can't get anything going in the United States. And as soon as they cross the border, or go overseas, or Canada, Mexico, they become extremely well-known, popular. The, ro the carpets rolled out, the red carpets roll out for them, and what have you. There's another guy, Lutz, uh, Lutz in Vegas. He he was received gold records and crowds of ten thousand in his audience. You know, in the United States, he's he's from New Jersey, but he can't make a go of it here. It says nobody's even heard of him here. So. Uh, so as soon as I send that contract to Sony Records, I'll be with my Rocket to Stardom. Was it for the Rocket to Stardom album that you toured the world? Yeah. So what was that like as a, as, as a guy from Lubbock? Suddenly you're touring the world, playing uh, halls all over the place and getting uh, great receptions. What was that experience like for you? Well, Jeff propelled me out of the Dust Devils of West Texas. Do you wish you were doing that now? Oh, I'll bet you. <laughs> what was your favorite place to play over there? Sydney, Australia. That is the place to visit, the place to move to. Uh, Nicole Kidman and her younger sister are there from there. You know that uh, Mankato has been declared as Cowboy Capital of the Universe. Yeah, yeah. And we. I'm going to be and inducted into the Cowboy Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City. Are you? No. You that should would be. be fantastic. But we, we took that title from Australia, and I think they're a little sore about it. Nicole Kidman? Yeah, her in particular. I think she's really upset about yeah. it. What? She's not She's not been in a movie since she's that upset because she doesn't want to do anything. That's the Mikato, yeah. <laughs> now, how, you've been playing with uh, the, the Ultimate Boys for quite a while. How long have you, you've been playing with Joey the longest? How did you meet up with Joey? That's a long story. I got another, put on another reel of tape. Well, you know, you, you don't have to be on stage for about eight hours, so you have plenty of time. <laughs> I met him when he was with the Rough Out Boys. Rough Out Boys? Never heard of him, though. I never heard of him. And he was playing drums for him? I was a Nick, uh, you know, Frank Novicki and. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, the Shafter kids. Uh, I can't remember the name of the band. The Rebel Heads or something. Okay. And and was that the band that you recorded uh, Standing in a Trash Can Thinking About You with? No, that was uh, years later. Tonight's show is dedicated to all the, uh, all the rebels of the South, the Confederacy. The Confederacy rises again. Oh boy, I sure hope you don't say that. Yeah. Why? Everybody's, nobody's going to be wearing a Confederate You, you are in the North, you know. Huh. Oh. <laughs> no, north of north of uh, Mankato River. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, you dedicated the last show to Peter Graves. Johnny Yuma was a rebel, and his name was Peter Graves. I'm sure there's nobody who has a birthday today, except Peter Zaremba, the Flesh Jones. That's right. Who you played with when you were in Mankato? Oh wait, uh, you, you looked at the Blaze Almanac. And yep. Is that one? You gave one. me two. Did I? I apologize. T for two. Slacking on the job. You're almost done. How? What? 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 A fifty left? No, you got maybe eight. Oh, don't scare me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, writer scramp yet, Ledge? No. I think there's uh, going to be a lot of people tonight that are going to ask I, for I, autographs. I think the pen's got writer scraps. Yeah, about to run out of ink. Are you happy to give autographs, though? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to write them letters back. Oh, I forgot to ask you. You brought your bugle. You brought your cowboy hat. But I couldn't find my white bandana. I was going to ask you if you got a towel. I got a, I got a, I got a royal blue towel. Okay. That's, that's a fade in the, it's got faded spots there. I've had in my window. 
when you're <laughs> beautiful, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley. <laughs> nah. Because what else do you have to travel with when you go on tour? The hamburger buns. Words? Do you need the words of the songs? Oh, I need that too. I'll be t time for my, my afternoon nap after I finish this. I, I think know. you're right. I think, I, I think that's what's going to go on. I how, how about a couple of and Red Bulls and a push bowl? How long I we don't been, know, man. How long have we been talking? 34 minutes. That's 14 minutes longer than I said that we would manage to talk. But I, perhaps if you take off 14 minutes of the Dude. nonsense. No, I'm pretty sure there's about five minutes worth of stuff that we can... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm tired of doodling. You're almost done. You're so close. Gosh, you double... Looks like you. No, you got one. The union says I have to have a break. Oh, that's true. Six left. <laughs> this break. This is public radio. We don't have unions. I could send the rest of them. Let's give it a go. So, Ledge, is there anything that you want to talk about, or you feel like you want to say to the listeners, or maybe you want to uh, just uh, say to all the KMSU uh, folks that's out horrible. there? Are you trying to forge his signature? I was going to just give it a, a try. I wasn't going to forge it, but I just wanted to see if I could do it. Okay. Anything oh, for our oh, KMSU listeners? Okay, all the, all the cowgirls that have blonde hair tonight will get in free. <laughs> well, that'll work because it's a That'll work out show. really well. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yes. It's a well, KMSU how, listener well, appreciation well, how's, show. Well, how's Klaus going to buy new strings for his bass? Oh, I'll give him He's some. He's resourceful. I've got extra strings. It'll be good to go. Ah, boy. Ah, that signature autograph and get get to you. Are you done, no. Latch? <laughs> Did you want to try throwing one? No. How how does these things sail? A little sideways. A little sideways. I need to I need to tape a strawberry lolly sucker on the bottom. So that all those suckers <laughs> in the audience can catch one. Uh -huh. That's one. That's one for Tony Felpert. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> Let's see if I can wrap up these five. Ah. Well, I wasted one, so you only have five left. Well, is that the one that went on the floor? Yep. These don't fly very well. I, I guess we punch holes in them and fly further. Grimacing, gr uh, grimacing, um, Tony. <laughs> oh, I want, I want to ask you. Just kidding. Um, Tim and I have these lists that we call unobtainable goals yeah. that we that we yeah, know will never happen, but we always try to aim for them anyway. Like bringing you to Mankato, and now it's happened twice. Um, do you have any like goals or dreams that you've always wanted that you still would like to work on? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to. Uh, <clears throat> since I haven't had a chance to meet Elon Musk yet. I'm going to be a stowaway on his first rocket to Mars. Would you like to go into space? Uh, not, not, not just space. To Mars. To Mars. Right. Uh, I, uh, uh, because Elon Musk is shooting up a cargo of Mars bars there. I have to go up and retrieve one before it melts. Why? Why Mars? Because it's the closest planet to. Well, it's all same. Well, well, almost like Earth. It's got sandstorms. Okay. I remember we were talking about if you'd ever want to have your ashes, they'll they'll put them on the space shuttle and put them up into space. Space shuttle is no more. Would you ever want to do something like that? Shucks, no. It'll probably be a uh, something you could have. Oh, here's. Have oh, wait a minute. Do. I have commissioned Klaus. Whenever I'm buried, buried. Have the epitaph on my grave tombstone back in the Lubbock Cemetery. Here lies Norman Carl Odom, better known as a legendary Stardust Cowboy, singer, songwriter, entertainer. Born on this day in the 20th century and died on June the 20th, 2068.
How many years from that right now would that be? I'll be 120 <laughs> years old. Okay. You were not good with the maths. But I didn't think it was <laughs> What is so funny? You're knocking yourself no, out like a I, sugar beet. I applaud your ambition. Do you want to be 120? Yeah, so I can so I can see how in my lifetime I'll see how far man is able to travel through outer space. Okay. Uh, it'd, be a, it'd be a hard thing to get as far as Saturn. Did you read about the uh, satellite that just burned yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here's, oh, you ever heard my song Saturn? I don't think so. I don't think so. You should probably sing it right now. No, uh, give me the sheets. sheets. <laughs> I got it, I got it written on my bed sheet. <laughs> And it came out of the wash. Do you remember any of it? I, when I orbited Saturn, I cut myself a pattern for a shirt. You just made that up right now. Yeah, you run. <laughs> <laughs> you got a song about Uranus. Uranus. <laughs> it's Uranus. That's right. It is Uranus, Shelley. Come on. <laughs> okay. Get it's not, together. It's not Uranus. It's Uranus. <laughs> Do you remember the last time you came to Mankato and I think the first conversation I had with you when you were driving, because I was driving and you were sitting up front with me, was the correct pronunciation of the word. You say I'm it. afraid to say it. Chaps. Chaps. Chaps? Now it's chaps? What? No, I've misspelled cowboy. <laughs> You're screaming at me. <laughs> Do you remember? Because I, oh, I, I thought it was chaps and you said chaps and we had you... I had to keep saying the word until I said it correctly. Yes, and it was uh, like 10 minutes. Well, take along a handful of chapsticks with you so we can staple them to your chaps. Chaps. Uh, I got <laughs> chapped. I got chapped chaps. Say that fast 10 Rev times. Chap, chap, ta, chap, tap, ta, chap, chaps. Yeah, it, that went about as well as I expected it to. <laughs> yeah, because I misspelled the word T H E. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last plate, I think. Oh, oh my no, gosh. two more. Only one more. This interview, a... interview will have lasted about 40 plates of signatures. Right, that's about how many plates you probably Ledge has in him. Don't put any any strawberry cake on this tonight. I want to eat your cake from my strawberry plate. No, remember what kind of cake you asked for? Uh, Fiesta. Red velvet. Red velvet. With white icing. Uh-oh! You're going to have orange? Nope. You're going to freak out when You're you see this cake. You're going to freak out when you see a cake. Seriously. Because we, we you freaked think out last night. One bite will put me into orbit? I think just seeing it will put you into orbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> Although, remember when we asked you what you wanted on your cake and you said you just wanted one thing? Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. Not that one. I'm going back home. Oh, come on. No, well, we, we, because we asked you what you wanted on your cake, and you said you wanted a, a, a girl to pop out of it. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. I want a sh Shelly to pop out. <laughs> can't make, can't make cake big enough. Jeez. For that to happen. Well, that's because Mankato's a big town. Mm. Okay, now. Okay. Well, you say okay now, and I expect you to say, roll me over. Roll me over, Beethoven. Okay. Now, I'm hoping that tonight, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All the 50 plate Odom. I'm hoping that tonight, uh... I grab, the, I grab a mole and throw them at the same time. <laughs> that'll be, no, no, no. That'll blank out the audience. If you hit one person with all these, that might, that might be <clears throat> a, lawsuit. a little damage. I think so. A lawsuit that KMSU is paying for. Uh. No thanks. No. You know we're member supported. They're not supporting us for that. No, they're not. <laughs> so what were you going to say, Shelley, about tonight? I forgot now. I, my gut tells me you were going to ask if Ledge is going to do trash can. Yes. You can do trash standing in a trash can thinking about you? I'm standing in a trash can thinking about you. I'm rusty. You know that was our first, the first song that we ever heard by you. Really? Yeah, and we just kind of fell in love with your music ever since. That was on Spider Records, mm -hmm. 1987. It was on the uh, Irwin Chusid Song in the Key of Z oh, CD. Oh! 
That's where Seth, we first heard it. That's where Sarah Ferguson first heard about me. Oh, really? She read the book Song in the Songs in the Key of Z. Huh. She got a copy of Paralyzed and okay, became an instant fan. Mm -hmm. She got my mailing address and sent me an autographed picture of herself. And she sent me a, and I, and I wrote her back, back, and she was really grateful that I wrote her back, you know. And mm -hmm. she said, then she sent me a, her latest book that she had written. And she doesn't, she, she used to be a painter like me, but then she switched over to photography just like me. So uh, Sarah Ferguson and I have some things in common except for hair color. <laughs> she's Especially old, now. Oh, she's an old redhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let, I don't think I knew that you were a painter. Well, what kind of stuff did you paint? Cactus. C <laughs> cactus. Like desert scenes? Like, and, and flying saucers. Did you paint your entire life, like when you were a kid and just kept yeah, doing yeah. it? Or? Yeah, yeah, well, you yeah. painted so, your car. A lot of Civil War scenery. Remember, Civil oh. War memorabilia. Really? Hmm. The South shall rise again if, if Mankato the <clears throat> Biscuit Company doesn't put us out with our dough. Oh, Pil let's give a toast to the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> I've drunk all peach. Peach mango. Wow. Peach tango or mango? mango? Important safety tip. Keep ledge away from the five hour energy drink peach mango. Yeah. 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 So do you get nervous before shows? I used to. Not anymore? No. Because you've just done so many? Yep. Are you nervous before tonight? No. That's good to know. I'm nervous. Because they, because they all get in free, they can leave any time they want. Oh, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good point. Got, Why didn't we put that you, on the poster? If you, hey, <laughs> if you pay to get in, you want, you want to stay and get your money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a donation box at the front door. <laughs> no, we like to do uh, free shows for our listeners because they're, they're so awesome. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the free shows. The the last one you did was one of the free shows too. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. That don't love freebie. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's how I could form my bumper stickers. Still got that NASA bumper sticker sent me on the back. Oh, back of my, oh, do you really? My 2016 Toyota. Did you ever put the Lubbock one up? No, I threw that one away. What? Uh, I don't know. I bought that, that one. Look, uh, that's what well, is that the one that said Lucky Me Out? From Lubbock? No, it just did Lubbock, but it, I was really bummed out because when I got it, I could tell like the guy just printed it off on his printer. Yeah, so I, mean, I it thought was... it was going to be a legit bumper sticker. Ah, uh, I'm more in favor of NASA than I am Lubbock. Let's get that on the record. Yeah, that's one for the record. Oops. It's too bad you can't work for NASA uh. as like a, a PR guy. You'd write songs about space. You yeah. could run their YouTube page or something. You could send out all the tweets. Yep. Did you start that tweet account you were talking about? No, it, it, it lapped. I ran out of gigabits. Yeah, that'll happen. Gigabytes or giga... Oh, terabits. All of them. That's a, all, that's the all the bits. That, that's just a shave uh, 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 higher than... Oh, boy. Trying to burp. Trying to burp and belch at the same time. Can't do it. You know, do you regret not having grandkids who could show you how to use the tweets? Because <laughs> I depend on my, my nieces to show me how to use stuff. Uh, twiddly do tweety. Tracked. <laughs> 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 help, help a guy, help a guy out, Butch. <laughs> <laughs> You look like you're fading fast, Ledge. I don't think that five-hour energy drink did much for you. Yeah, well, I'm fading. I'm, 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 I'm a horse pegasus. We're fixing to uh, ride in the sunset before we launch off for the Milky Way. Uh-huh. I'll call plastic. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> well, do you have anything you want to, else you want to, you want to say, Ledge? Because I, I feel like you're, you're getting kind of tuckered out and you need a nap. Y'all come! Oh, I don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, my, uh, uh, Governor too. Also dedicated to Governor David. Oh, that's All nice. Right. Oh boy, it's a good time to stop. Yeah. Programming start next door. Let's call it a. Let's All call right. it a, a, a day. Well, thank you, Ledge. A day in the life of the Ledge. Hey, do you have a name for that voice when you do that? Uh, Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandpa Ledge? No, Grandpa Itis. Grandpa Bunyan voice. That, well, some, some girl, some lady in Las Vegas asked me, how do you do that? I says, I can't, how do you do that? I can't talk like that for so long. But she said she can't do it without ruining her voice or something like that. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, well, I, well, I swallowed a frog and got stuck in my throat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever lost your voice? Laryngitis. Laryngitis stepped in one time. Was it when you were having to perform? No. That's good. That's whenever I slept under a <clears throat> cool fan on a cool night. That was a year ago last month. I mean a year ago, June. I okay. Got, I got a bad case of laryngitis. I had, had to take off one night from work, but, that, but I still had it for two weeks. Bad case of laryngitis. Well, you got it saved? Yep. Oh, I know I was going to ask you. Who does the best lead voice? No. Tim or, Tim or I? No, um, uh, <coughs> Lee Harris. <coughs> now, you, you've said Lee Harris a few times. Should should I know Lee Harris's name? Did, or is he no, somebody no, you no. just know from no, over no, the years? No, no, no. He's from Michigan. He started playing, uh, playing Paralyzed, my records, and selling okay. on his radio oh. programs. <laughs> Uh, he got on the broadcast business when he moved to, <laughs> moved to the L.A. area. Uh -huh. Oops. The guy that uh, that did, uh, there was a moose cartoon character, a moose cartoon character, you remember him? Bullwinkle? Bullwinkle. That was his mentor. He taught him June how to do voices, it. voiceovers, you know, for cartoons. Uh -huh. He's on voiceovers for uh, a lot of tea, uh, commercials, Edward commercials. He did a complete voiceover for Men in Black number one. Really? The voiceover. Wow. He got a he got a nine hundred some some odd dollar royalty uh, check for that. Wow. And for that he'd done in his audition for a lot, he's done a lot of stuff stuff for Di for Disney and mm -hmm. different voiceovers for cartoon characters. He's a he's a member of SAG. Okay. SAG and Astra. And uh, so uh and then he's a big Lesh fan. He is amazing. He's a great big dude. He's like a football player. Mm -hmm. He got curly brown hair. Every time he sees me, he starts singing "Paralyzed." <laughs> <laughs> he's just like he's like uh, he he likes a uh, you know odd new. Oh, he he before he passed away, Ray Bradbury was a friend of his. Oh, Lee away. Harris? Yeah, Lee Harris was okay. friend. They were friends, buddies. Huh. Ray Bradbury Ray Bradbury lived in Palm Springs. He passed away about a couple of years ago, age 92, 93. Mm -hmm. and, and Forrest, there's a guy named Forrest who, a long time ago, he coined the phrase sci-fi. Oh, Forrest J. Ackerman, right? For, yeah, yeah, Forrest, mm -hmm. yeah. He was friends of his, too. And he showed up at with Lee Harris' wedding. I showed up. And he was friends with uh, one of, one of the uh, Three Stooges' uh, daughter. Daughter was was about by my age. Showed up at Lee Harris's wedding too. Huh. In the backyard of his home in the uh, home in uh, Burbank. Sounds like it was oh, the knows, place to be. He he knows a lot of uh, people. Show you know, not big name stars. I guess I'm about the biggest name star he knows. You know, people that are. He he worked at a uh, prop shop in, in Hollywood one time. One time, he told me all about these props that they they leased to movie company studios mm -hmm. for movies. He worked at Forrest Ackerman's house one time. Forrest Ackerman's house was decorated with all kinds of sci-fi material. Mm -hmm. There were scenes that were filmed in his house that were on Star Trek. Huh? Yeah, you know, the first Star Trek was on TV in '66. Him, Forrest Ackerman and his wife never had any children. So after he died, uh, he he received one seventeenth of his will. 
Wow. They're not recording. Oh. Yeah, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> when did you stop recording? Like two minutes ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just came in to ask if you want me to shut the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no, we're all yeah. done. Ledge is, I think, hit a wall. Yet. Ledge is ready to take a nap. Take a nap. Oh, that might be in my future as well. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. lunch time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get some lunch? Where's, yeah, where's the lunch mobile? Uh, okay, you want to get some food for you? Yeah. Well, I heard there's a food there truck that has fresh squeezed <laughs> energy drinks. Squeezed energy? Yeah, fresh squeezed energy drinks. The truck's out front. They're squeezing mangoes even as we speak. <laughs> uh, Peach mango. You know, Ledge, I heard. I heard <laughs> hey, pe I, kind of peachy. I heard you almost got in trouble at that restaurant a little while ago. What happened? Andrew P. Jack told me that you did like this to one of the waitresses. <laughs> oh, jeez. Did, did he? Did he? Uh, did, he uh, talk, did you talk to him on the phone? No, when I was morning? there, the, you know, when, when when you stood me up. When I stood you. Yeah, when me and Woody were going to meet you for breakfast, <laughs> and your cable went out, so you stayed home instead of oh. meeting us for breakfast. Like, Andrew said that when the waitress came to the table, you said something about squeezing, like, I'm going to squeeze, and then you went like this to her. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Oh, oh, I was, I was, that was my lips, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, she's from Mexico City, and she, they don't have those expressions in Mexico City. No, I think it means something completely different. <laughs> squeeze me, honey. Alrighty, we're going to call that a wrap. <laughs>